night, the Angels ran into left-handed sensation Barry Zito, who cooled off the hot halo bats. Then the A's superstar shortstop took over first on defense, then at the plate as Miguel Tejada applied the big blow with a two-run homer. But tonight, it's a brand-new ball game, and the Angels will try and start a new streak. Angels, A's, next. Welcome now to Edison International Field of Anaheim for Angels Baseball on Fox Sports Net. Tonight, it's game two of a three-game series between the Oakland Athletics and the Anaheim Angels. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is the Wonder Dog, Rex Hudler. The Angels lost game one last night, two to one. But, Hud, it was a great pitching matchup between Kevin Apier and Barry Zito. You better believe it, but... It's not going to slow that angel train down one bit that loss. Mike Sosha has engraved in these players mind to not lose at any cost and continue to score them runs tonight. They have to face Tim Hudson who has won nine of his 11 decisions against the Angels but the Halos got him last week. They did because he got that ball elevated. He's a sinker slider pitchers got to keep the ball down if he's going to have any success. Garrett Anderson came up off the deck to pitch before they dropped him and he hit a home run big two run blast. Spezio chimed in with another laser liner of his own. George Fabregas he got the game winning hit off of Hudson. This guy Hudson has dealt against the Angels in the past but last Wednesday they got him. He gave up eight hits in five and a third inning. They're looking for the same thing tonight. But whenever you take on Oakland, you have to keep the score down, which means you must get strong starting pitching. And tonight, that means Aaron Seeley has to throw the zeros up on the board against a red-hot Oakland A by the name of Miguel Tejada. Fox Sports Net presents Anaheim Angels Baseball, brought to you by the Mercedes-Benz Dealers of Southern California. Affordable luxury, great values, there's nothing else like a Mercedes-Benz. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade, is it in you? By Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. And by Lincoln Mercury, for great 0% financing deals, visit your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. You are looking at Edison International Field of Anaheim where the Angels and Athletics will be wearing their 1982 uniforms in conjunction with Major League Baseball's Triumphant Glory Series. The Angels won the West in 1982, second title in four years as they started in 1979. And there they are, the white, the red, and the blue. Is that Doug DeSensei's? Doug will be with us in the third inning, but no, that's Troy Gloss is going for the all time home run record by a third baseman already passing Doug. And the yellow, the Kelly Green, yellow of the Oakland Athletics. Mark Ellis will lead things off against Aaron Seeley, or Aaron Seeley. He is 7 and 7 this year with a 4 9 3 earned run average. In his last game, he lost to the Oakland A's in Barry Zito, even though Aaron pitched very well, giving up just two runs in seven innings. 313 opponents batting average is something CD wants to get down. It's like Apier. Apier's under 300 now. After a nice eight inning performance last night, Seeley's looking to do the same thing. 150 hits, way too many for CD. That tells me he's finding the middle of the plate more than he wants to. That is the fourth most among all starting pitchers in the American League. Todd Ritchie of the Chicago White Sox has given up 164 hits and 85 runs. He only gave up two runs in that last start, just like Apier last night. He pitched a very good ball game. He's effective when his curveball's over and he's hitting the outside parts of the plate. Ellis knocks it right back to Aaron Seeley and he throws him out. Let's check out the Oakland Athletics lineup. Mark Ellis, you saw leading things off, will be followed by Scott Hatterberg and then Miguel Tejada. Dave Justice will bat fourth, then Eric Chavez, Jermaine Dye, John Mabry, Terrence Long, and Greg Myers. Tejada has been hot, and you see how strong he is for a 5'10, 185 pound shortstop, 116 career home runs, and he is just 25 years old. Now Scott Hatterberg, and he takes curveball, ball one. Well, Hatterberg knows a little about Aaron Seeley. They played together for a long, long time. A matter of fact, Scott was Aaron's catcher at Washington State, where they went to college. And there's a strike. 
one and one. Hatterberg has faced his former teammate ten times, three hits, and one big fly home run. Hatterberg's added a solid bat in that second spot for Art Howe. One and two. Seeley's command with his fastball has been excellent in his last three starts. Always been known for the great 12 to 6 break on his curveball. There's the curve there, a bit low. George Fabregas is catching Aaron Seeley in this game. George getting the start. Is he had a big game against Tim Hudson in last Wednesday's game. Drove in the game winning run. Big sacrifice bunt down. How about that? Curveball that maybe it stayed up but had good break to it, and Hatterberg stays with it and singles back up the middle. The Angels defensively still have the fewest errors in the American League with just 53 this year. And it's Erstad in center field. He has not made an error all year long. Anderson in left, Paul Marrow in right, Gloss, Eckstein, Kennedy, Fulmer, third to first, and George Fabregas catching Aaron Seeley. Now trouble at the plate in Miguel Tejada. Six home runs since the All-Star break. He just has a real good idea at the plate about what pitches he can drive out of the park and which ones he can't. He's a kid that's really matured offensively. Last year he came on and now it's continuing to this year. He's definitely the MVP of that, that A's team. My opinion. I mean, last night was a great example. I mean, he he came up big defensively. Got saved two runs that diving stop right there. Two runs, and then he comes up the next inning and added two of his own. That's single-handedly taking care of the team. I mean, Angels. The defensive play with the bases loaded, and then with a man on the home run, and that was the difference in all the offense Oakland would get. Ground ball. Gloss has it. Goes to second one. Kennedy's flip. Got him. Nice play by Adam Kennedy. Boy, did he hang in there tough. Nice. First man sure. Second man got to be quick. Guy coming on you. Whoop. He got it. Nice turn. Aaron Seeley shut down Oakland in the first inning, and now he hopes the Angels' offense can erupt against Tim Hudson, a tough pitcher. Here's the Angels' offense Eckstein, Erstad, Salmon, Anderson, Gloss, Fulmer, Palmero, Fabregas, and Adam Kennedy. Garrett Anderson has a nine game hit streak going, and his 36 doubles, most in the majors. He has to face Tim Hudson. He's only six feet tall and about 170 pounds, but Man, he is a tough pitcher out of Auburn University. He will face David Eckstein, and Hudson this year ranks fifth in the American League in innings pitched and walks and tied for fifth in shutouts, seventh in hits, tied for ninth in losses and complete games. He is their ace of the pen when you consider durability, longevity, experience, and they say he's a real anchor even to the two talented left-handers, Zito and Mulder. Eckstein chops it. That's a tough play. Up with it, Hernandez, and he gets Eckstein by a step. Rick Myers, nice play. Here's he comes out of that crowd. Here's my scouting report. Hudson got him. Oh, he's got a real nice splitter. That splitter is special. Goes down. All of them. Keep the ball down the zone. And he's got a rebound from his last start. And it's the keys for him is to keep that ball down. Sinker, slider, split finger. Every pitch he throws goes down. But when he's elevated and he's up in the zone, the Angels seem to get their bats on him quite often. Last start. Still, he is 9 and 2 against the Angels in his career. Now, Darren Erstad, 297 batting average. Low ball one. Erstad had the triple that drove in the only Angels run with Eckstein at first base. He ripped one into the right field corner. Darren, you're waiting for his power to take off. Just six home runs. And he pops this one up. Foul territory. Greg Myers. Not enough room. Ooh. 
Myers ran into the cable. Tester for Greg Myers, former Angel. Find the screen. Look at him. He's looking for the screen. He knows where it is. Just couldn't get his glove up over that cable. Trying to get his arm up over the cable, he would have caught it. But it stopped him right there. Good attempt, though, Mirzi. So another chance for Darren Erstad. Two years ago, hit 25 home runs in a season, and he takes one right down Broadway. It's one and two. Only nine last year, but you can throw last year out. I mean, with the injury to his right knee, and personal problems that Darren suffered. He's healthy again. His leadership, his batting average, all up. He said last year was one of those years where he really didn't even feel like coming to the ballpark. Not foul. In fact, he's only got six home runs. Really, he he's doing his job, especially on defense. He's saved so many runs out there this year. We can't even count them. Catalyst on defense, and he's stirring that drink when once Eckstein gets on ahead of him. And he's got plenty of power. Believe me. Watch his batting practice. Sometimes he's just phenomenal. Come out early. You're going to come to the game, catch the batting practice. Lifts it in the air left field. John Mabry's there. Two outs. Defensively, Oakland had a special game last night. We showed the play by Miguel Tejada, but Mark Ellis at second base also played quality ball. Tejada has started 680 of the last 697 games. Miguel, though, with 14 errors, and he will tell you that's too many. Chavez has 12. Ellis only four. Hatterberg is at first. Mabry long and die in the outfield and Myers will catch Hudson. This is not a great defense even though Oakland did have a special night last night. Tejada is excellent. Ellis is solid at second. Chavez has won a gold glove but when you talk about the outfield T Long's probably playing his best baseball in the corners than he does in center field but he's been forced there because of the loss of Johnny Damon last year. Now Tim Salmon. But John Mabry has been better on defense than Giambi. And you know, that was one of the reasons I believe they moved Giambi to the Philadelphia Phillies is they just weren't really happy with his defense in left field. John Mabry was sitting the bench up in Philly. Got the call of his life to come to a contending team out here in California. Lives in St. Louis Missouri. And he's a duck hunting partner of Rex Hudler in the past. Got a nice little duck house. I mean, he's got a beautiful home there out there in the country. A duck house. Salmon chops it to Chavez. One, two, three, go the Angels in the first. We head to number two. Nothing, nothing in the second. Tonight, the best damn sports show periods all star summer continues when Hall of Fame running back Eric Dickerson tells us who the best running back of all time really is. Plus, the Diamondbacks Luis Gonzalez talks about Arizona. Can they repeat as world champs? The all star summer continues at 11 right here on Fox Sports Net. Are they really in that car? Uh, yes, they really are. I mean, how can that car move with all that weight in the back? You know what? That is why they're driving a big Cadillac. I mean, I know Toyota would not. I know Crux head alone has got to weigh 50, 60 pounds. What about Tom Arnold's head? Oh. <laughs> Here's oh. David Justice getting into one right field. Oh. Oh, and a wonderful catch. <laughs> he made that play. That ball was hit on the line. The toughest play for an outfielder is the ball directly over your head. Paul Merrill throws his glove up and says, hey, nice play by the glove. Fantastic. That's extra. But look, he wasn't even looking. The no-look catch by the kid, Paul Merrill, filling in for the Kingfish Salmon, who's the designated hitter tonight. What a play by Orlando. And then he gives a little further tilt to his cap. Tim, the DH tonight. Look at that. He curls that baby way over near his left ear. 
Eric Chavez the batter. He has a five game hit streak going. Eight hits in his last 19 at bats. Raised it to 266. Looks like he's got a nice haircut too. He's all tightened up. Maybe he has a favorite barber here. Could be. Yeah, you know, you travel around the leagues, you, you, you become accustomed to some of the cities you're in, and sometimes you have your favorite spot. Who knows? It may have been Ramon Ortiz who cuts a lot of the angel hair. Yeah. Probably not. But there's a strike on the inside corner. Now it's two balls and two strikes. And he had long hair yesterday. That's the way you get it done. Uh, you know, I, I don't miss too many things up here. I, no, I, you don't. You know, I like to spot everything and check out the players and give you the inside. And when you're in a, in a slump like he's been in, sometimes you try to make a big change. And hairdo is certainly one of them, and he, especially in, in the 21st century today. He has no home runs in his last 20 games and has 20 home runs this year. So he has excellent power, and he lines that one to Troy Gloss. Those are the two best young third basemen in the game, and one lines to another. <laughs> First two outs been hit hard. Gloss in the right position. Good swing by Chavez. Went the other way. Gloss in the hot corner. Pretty nice little streak he's got going. Now Jermaine dies. Strike one. Dying an 0 for 10 slump after. Really hitting a hot spell after the All-Star break, going a week and a half and hitting 380 with three home runs. Big guy with big time power, six feet five, 230 pounds. Formerly with Atlanta, then the Kansas City Royals, where he had terrific seasons and won a Gold Glove in right field and big time power. Now with Oakland, the last two years, fastball catches the inside corner, one and two from Aaron Seeley. I was cruising that A's locker room this afternoon and. Talking about those unis and how bright they are, and heck, I, I like them, but the players don't seem to. In the hole, Eckstein backhands and throws. That's three fine defensive plays by the Angels, one outstanding by Orlando Palmero, and then Gloss and Eckstein, and the Angels get the A's in the second. Nice grab. What an outstanding defensive play by Orlando Palmero in right field to rob Dave Justice of at least two bases. There's a playoff atmosphere here at the ballpark again, and pitching and defense the theme. When you have Apier and Zito last night and Hudson and Seeley tonight, it should be a low scoring game, but a lot of innings to go. And now Garrett Anderson to start things in the second inning. The last time he faced Tim Hudson to lead off a game, Garrett hit a two run home run off Tim deep into the right field seats. Now he pounds one down to Scott Hatterberg. One out. Last week, you remember, Rex, Tim Hudson came inside on GA. Yes, he did. This pitch here nearly caught him in the hip. Some guys you don't need to wake up. Next pitch. Answers just like you like after you get hit or nearly get hit. Big two run shot that helped him a lot. Hudson gets a first pitch out. Now a face. Troy Gloss. Gloss trying to find that good stroke again. Three hits and 16 at bats on this homestand. Still the production is strong with 67 RBIs. He's in the top 15 in the RBIs. And sometime along this year you're, you're going to see a Troy Gloss stretch and HUD we really haven't seen it yet. Yeah he's shown shown power signs of coming out. But nothing like a two week stretch we've seen in the past where he will hit everything and everything hard and far. Salmon slumped early. Now Gloss is slumping. If both can get hot. Look out. You know, this is the way the game is played. Not everyone's going to be hot at the same time except they were in the month of May. Gloss, he he was the only guy really hitting at that time early in the season. After that six-game suspension, it was a five. How many games did he sit out? 
But that's one of the reasons the Angels got off to such a slow start. Spezio was seven. Glosses was was just five. That was for the fight in spring training with San Diego. Two and two. Hudson, even though Gloss hasn't been red hot, still respects him. He's putting everything on the outside corner, keeping it away from his wheelhouse. He likes that ball down on over the plate about knee high. Gloss gets this one. Left field, John Mabry there, and he pulls it down for the second out. Fox Sports Net presents Anaheim Angels Baseball, brought to you by your local Lexus dealer and the all new ES300, a new world of luxury. By SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary job, infinite character, SBC. And by Nissan, Ribbon. Kevin Apier pitched a gem last night, gave up just two runs in eight innings. He said the only problem he had was pitching for the wrong team. He said Oakland gave up, got the two runs from Tejada, but Barry Zito pitched so well. Zito, but has he given up one run to the Halos in his last two starts? I mean, they have a one, two, three pitching staff with Zito, Mulder, and Hudson that is on par or better than any trio in big league baseball. I mean they are now 32 and 16 as a trio. There's Mark Mulder. And they're all young and they're all locked up long term through at least 2004. Matter of fact Mulder I think is just beginning the first of a four year contract. Now Brad Fulmer. Hop foul. Red now down in the count, one and two. Angels continue this 20 game stretch against the best teams in baseball. Minnesota, Oakland, Seattle last week. The Angels are five and three in the first eight games. We've got 12 to go. Play Oakland, then Seattle, then welcome Boston and the New York Yankees to Edison Field next week. This is. This is the second game into a 23 game stretch for the Angels that play consecutively without an off day. And this will be a big grind. Not only are they playing good teams, but they're also not going to get any off time. So this will be a, a real important stretch to see how they come out of it if they're still right there at the top like they have been. Well, they have gotten off to a good start and they stretched against the, the best teams in the game. Fulmer pulling it to the second baseman Ellis who drops the baseball and when he picks it up Fulmer's safe. So it's an error and just the fifth on Mark Ellis. Ellis just learning how to play second base a former shortstop he made two great plays last night just took his eye off it. Ball hopped up handcuffed it. Got to watch that ball the way watch his head. He's going to look up before the ball gets to him see. Got to be able to try to keep that. The eyes on that glove the whole time in the ball. That's two really nice plays last night. And at a critical time in the game when the Angels had a chance to tie the score, his second backhanded play and getting the force at second base. If the ball goes through, the Angels tie the game at 2 2. Now Orlando Paul Merrill. And it was Paul Merrill's ground ball up the middle that Ellis backhanded and threw to the second to the second base. Miguel Tejada was for the force. What kind of move does Tim Hudson have? He's got quick feet. Very good athlete. Good hands. Good fielding pitcher. He's solid. And he's when he's on top of his game, he's going to get a lot of ground balls. He's got two outs with pop-ups. The rest of them on the ground. And he was such a talented athlete at Auburn. He was not only a great pitcher. He was a great hitter too. Good athlete. Center fielder when he wasn't pitching and it almost hit 400. Now Paul Merrill pops it foul. As a pitcher at Auburn, Tim Hudson was 15 and two. As a hitter, hit 396 with 18 home runs. And they said if he wanted to, he probably could have played hockey. He could have been a wide receiver in football. Point guard in basketball, as you said, Hud, he's just a good athlete. 
not that big when you shake his hand and you feel that grip and you know he's that wiry strength in there. Runner up for the Cy Young Award two seasons ago, and then last year came right back and had another terrific year, winning 18 games, losing just nine. This year he's one loss shy of matching his total for all last year. He has eight losses already. See that grip. Hudson sinking fastball, slider change, and nasty split finger. That's his out pitch, split. Ooh, watch out. That's the second time in this at bat Orlando's called timeout and that ball was came a purpose pitch pretty close to Orlando. Now was that a purpose pitch because Kim let it go even when time time's called right here. Time is called and Orlando better not let your guard down. Oof. Now, well, hard to tell if that's purpose or not whenever time is called and that pitchers in his delivery you got to be heads up. That's why the umpire he bails he runs when he calls time in the middle of his delivery. Was talking to Mark McLemore of Seattle about a situation that happened just like that. Palmero base hit to right field. Fulmer turns. He will hold at second, respecting the arm of Jermaine Die, and the Angels have two on, with two out in the second inning. So Palmero comes through with the Angels' first hit of the game. And Rex, Mark McLemore was talking to me about David Eckstein being hit 17 times this year, and he said. He was only hit eight times in 16 years. And I said, Did you ever charge them out? And he said, Once. I called time. I stepped out. I was eight feet from home plate. And Esteban Yan was mad at me. So he drills me. Ooh. And he said, What? I had to charge. The guy drills me when I stepped eight feet away from the plate. Mm. Look at George. Ninth season in the majors. Had a good game against Hudson last week. The game winning base hit broke a 3 3 tie. George going to see more time now. Benji Molina is on the disabled list. Jose Molina is filling in, doing pretty nice. He's made a couple of errors since he's been out there, but it's nice to have Fabregas, somebody you can count on as far as being a signal caller. Now, he's not that strong with a bat, but he certainly can hurt you in this situation. Two balls and no strikes. It's tough catching once twice a week coming out there trying to hit your timing is not as sharp as the other guys that see live pitching every day. Number one catcher Benji Molina might be gone the next three maybe even four weeks with the hamstring pull left side. There's his brother Jose who's been sharing the catching roles with George Fabregas. And here's George to center field and deep. And making the catch up against the wall, Terrence Long. So George gives Tim Hudson a scare, but T. Long has just enough room to make the catch. Mm, George almost had him an extra base hit. Nothing, nothing ball game in the third this week on Fox Saturday Baseball. Sean Green and the Dodgers take on Barry Bonds and the rival Giants in a battle between National League West contenders. It all begins this weekend. Check local listings for the start time in your area. Arizona right now with a two and a half game lead on L.A. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler, and we're joined by Doug DeCincy, who was part of that 1982 championship team. Doug, what was that year like? That was a great year. We just had such a great team, man for man, every position. It was just fun playing. I remember talking to Bobby Grich about the team, and he said that was a team more than any that he ever played on that had to grind out every single victory. We absolutely did. You know, defensively, offensively, we knew we, yeah, you know, we didn't have the the great bullpen, and uh, we had solid starters, but we just knew we had to score as many runs as possible. And John Mabry. Squeaking out a base hit. It's the first time that the A's have had their leadoff man of this game. Let's go back to one of the great moments. How about your three August home run night. game? And you did it twice that year. What, within five games of each other? Yeah, that's when uh, that baseball looked like a big beach ball coming up there, Rex. Wait, Doug, nice quick stroke. Look at the old ballpark there. Another. Oh. 
three homers twice in the same. Look at that. Oh, August 8th, he did it he's, again. He's walking on him. Look at the tip the cap. Hey, you know, we used to do that back then. I like that. There you go, Doug. We got some action here. Now long to left field, backing up Garrett Anderson. He makes the catch, and John Mabry has to hustle back because he was all the way around second base. Brad Fulmer says, don't make the throw. It looks like he, uh, uh, you know, when he went back on, he turned, got spun around right there. He still made a great job. That ball carried a lot further than he ever thought it was going. No doubt about it. Now, what do you think about the lone all-star for the Angels this year? I think he has just been a, you know, just a block of granite in that lineup. He's, he he definitely has been the the player that has kept the the glue there and, and making this team be as competitive as possible. He is just so consistent with everything he does every single at bat. I mean just you know even you know his first at bat tonight he, he hits a ball right down the line you know if, if Mayberry's not on the line that's a double. Hey and, and you know Doug no one's wearing your number you wore number 11 any reason for that. Yeah they retired it for Jim Fergosi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I looked at that yeah. board I'm looking it's up there. It's I'm 11. Looking, I know but I'm looking on the roster going there's no 11s on here. I know I know. Way to go, Doug. I think we got to change that a little bit. Well, can you tell our fans the feeling of what it's like to be hot the season you had in 82 with two games with three home runs? I mean, you, you probably can't wait to get to the ballpark. It was just, um, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect every day. And I just, uh, you know, being competitive, going out there and trying to grind it out. I mean, just as what Bobby Gritch said, you didn't take anything for granted. And we were in such a, the lineup was so solid from top to bottom that if somebody got hot they couldn't pitch around you they had to come to you and you know I just happened to be hot and not think about it and, and uh, just I hit the balls all over the place that for about three weeks then it was just I'll say it was just a lot of fun let me tell you that's what all that batting practice and all that extra time that you do really pays off because that ball just comes up there and it was looking like a big grapefruit. Now did you finish your career on to Baltimore then right or was that before was the Angels after Baltimore the Angels were after Baltimore I got traded here uh, you know in 1979 I was on the Oriole team that that beat the Angel team for the, in the playoffs to go to the World Series. Wow. That was fun too but that's when I was an Oriole. I hear you. Hey you know they, they, they get that stand and note quite often there. Yeah. Well you hit 301 that season with 30 home runs and 97 driven in the quality pitching as well you talked about the starters and waving at the offering now the throw down and they will catch Mabry trying to steal so a strikeout Myers and a throw out of Mabry and Seeley has a shutout third inning we'll right back to Doug DeSensei after this. Bottom of the third inning nothing nothing with Oakland and Anaheim let's go back to the 82 season that was the year they had the club record 93 victories the Angels on pace for 96 this year they won the West by three games over KC but look at the Angels who went to the All Star game and Doug how about the Angels that did not go that's what I was just noticing I mean obviously those four deserved it but you you, you also had uh, uh, Donnie Baylor you had Brian Downey you had Bob Boone um, um, you know just Jeff we Zahn just, won 18 Jeff Zahn, that year. He won 18 games. He didn't get go, and uh, we were just as solid as a team as you could anticipate. Adam Kennedy, nice bunt. Chavez up, and Kennedy safe with the dive. I'm always a little leery about that dive head first there. You know, that's when somebody breaks their finger or something like that. But Doug and Rex, do you think Adam felt a little bad about last night? Not running out that pop up in the ninth inning Mike Sosha did talk to him after the game and he, he said Adam you work as hard as any player out there and I think he just wanted to show that he would give complete effort. Well um, I hope he felt bad you know because that's what it takes to be a, a first division player you can't anticipate when you're playing in this time of time of the year and you know this is a, his first time playing in a competitive at the end of the season every play every game counts you just can't let up at all and I'm sure he feels bad about it. he's going to try and do whatever he can to make it up but yesterday's gone and you got to just make sure it never happens again. That's exactly what Mike Sosha talked about. He just simply said yes we talked about it. And then a reporter asked another question. He said, We've turned the page. It's history. We move on to today. 
Well, I'm sure some players probably had something to say too, because that's it's important for the players to voice their opinion to everybody on that bench to know that's not acceptable. We need to do everything in order to win this uh, this division. That may have been Sergeant Erstad. There's a pitch out, but Kennedy not going. Every team needs one, Rex. You Doug, know that. Doug, and with that team in '82, you played on. Heck, there was a lot of leaders on that team. Did you? A lot guys, of leaders. Would you guys police that team for Gene Mock? Pretty much, you know. Um, Gene didn't like, uh, you know. Gene really liked uh, uh, the non-veteran player. He liked a guy that he could handle a little bit easier. And he had this team with all this veteran and all these individual and these great players. And I think it was a learning lesson for Gene a little bit going through there because we did police ourselves. And, and you know, Gene was always used to policing everybody. And he really didn't have to do that too much because if somebody stepped out of line, you know, we had personalities. I mean, you had Reggie, but you know, you had a guy like Bobby Gritch and Donnie Baylor and Brian. Da I mean, who are you policing there? You know, those guys are playing pretty tough every day. A lot of accountability. But that's what it takes. It takes accountability to your teammate. Eckstein slashing it in the gap. Kennedy all way around second. He will score. The Angels will take a one nothing lead. And Eckstein's going for third. Got Here's the throw. It is safe. Oh. That's a close play at third base. I knew coming around second he was going to have to pick up that base a little bit. That was a great relay throw. Perfect hit and run, Rex. Beautiful. Run. Yes, and Sosha's on the attack. Adam Kennedy, nice head first dive, bunt base hit. Doug, you take the replay. I mean, you just, what? You know he's going the other way, and he, he fights that ball inside and pushes it out there. He didn't really want to hit it in the air, and he hit it a lot better than I think what he was really trying to do. And the outfielders obviously were playing in for that flare. That's a nice defensive play there. But look at the throw. One hop, one, one throw again. I mean, that's a perfectly designed. Uh, relay play and boy that's a close call right there look at slow you know his foot did get in there you know it he that, missed the tag on the foot that's nice about good the replay call by, good call <laughs> by the ump that's the umpire doesn't have that replay we got but we get to see it two or three times different angles but I'm going to say another thing there if he doesn't slide straight into that base if he tries to hook slide around that steep he's probably out you're right Doug now what are the, some of the things you like about Mike Sosha's 2002 team. Well, I'll tell you, D David Eckstein is, is somebody that you know. I watch him take ground balls. I watch him do his little thing, and I'm never really impressed. And then I watch him when he plays this game, and I'm really impressed. He makes things happen. He does things. He plays with big heart. You got Erstad up here. He's playing with big heart. He, you know, great talent, but he doesn't leave anything uh, off the field. He's just right there all the time. It gets away. Here comes Eckstein. He will score. And the Angels take a 2 nothing lead. Now that was a purpose pitch up and in. They were thinking that he might be squeezing after. Uh, and uh, Myers just didn't get to the ball. Because Hudson rarely misses up that high and in. I mean, you're going to see this, this ball. He's thinking that hey, something's going to happen here. This ball's, you know, that's, that's far enough up and in. And he just didn't get to it. And that's a good pitch. You know, that's what you want to do. You're ahead in the count. You don't want him to get an easy pitch to bunt. No hesitation from the X factor. I call him the X factor because he. I can see why. He Let me tell you, he does everything and every play. That's what I love about him. You know, I mean, you, you just watch him take ground balls, or you watch him do things, and you watch him hit MVP. You're going, okay, but it's the game time that counts. Tejada, oh. he spins around and throws out Erstab. What a play by Miguel. That was phenomenal. Watch this ball come back on him a little bit. That second hop came back into him, and that's that's a tough play. Same guy robbed Erstad on the line drive last night, saved two ribbies with that catch. And look where he is. Well, that's showing a lot of range right there. You can see the ball came back at him a little bit. Plant, good throw. You know, Erstie's hit three or four balls in the last two games and hadn't have anything to show for it. Great play. You know, it's one thing catching, it's another thing to step up, plant, and throw a strike. From that side of the field. That, that presents a little, this, this throw here, Doug, you had to make. Yeah. Chavez throws out Tim Salmon, so two out. Let's go back to the 82 season, and Doug, I want you to talk about this because it was a wild ending. Oh, I remember this game big time. Luis Sanchez 
put his glove down and found it and it was just you know next thing you know we're all shaking each other's hands and everything and then right there somebody just ripped my hat off and they ripped it. I mean we were what? in the center of this over the crowd and I mean all of a sudden we just get this pressure conversion now that we're just trying to get off the field right there I mean Baylor grabbed a hold of me and we were just together and of course with having Donnie Baylor hold on to you I was going to be able to get where I needed to get <laughs> you felt good you felt safe well the Angels have won three Western titles and Doug you've been a big part of two of them could be could 2002 be another year here is Garrett Anderson to left field we'll talk about that when we come back it is a two nothing score the Angels have the lead on a Bunt by Kennedy, a triple by Eckstein, and then X scores in the wild pitch. Aflac trivia Doug DeSensei is one of five American League players ever to hit three home runs in a game twice in a year. Who are the other four players? We'll give you the answer later in the ball game. Doug is one of only two players with three with two three run homer games in one month. Fantastic career, Doug. Oh, thank Man, you. I was blessed. I was well, just, you know. When you retired now and walked away, what did you get into? Well, um, I got into real estate development. Uh, you know, I st still live here in Orange County and uh, ended up uh, being involved in a lot of Ruby's restaurants. So I've got quite a few of those and then had this opportunity to build a golf course uh, in Irvine. And I said, right. well, let's. You know how many people get a chance to play Major League Baseball and then build a golf course. And <laughs> so I went for it. You know, it was one of those things, and you know, it was it was a lot like my baseball career. You know, that a lot of people said I could never play in the big leagues, and I ended up playing. And a lot of people said you're never going to be able to get that golf course built. And I said, well, that challenge made me survive. And uh, Strawberry Farms exists today, and and it's beautiful, and it's fun. It's, yeah, I'm real proud of it. Here's Seeley against Mark Ellis, and he knocks it foul one and two. I love it. It's tough. I mean, you know, I lost three sleeves of balls when I played out there with you uh, a couple yeah, months ago. but I ago. gave you a dozen, so what do you care about? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, man, Doug, it's a real nice course out. And how has your wife, Christy, adjusted to life as a, with a, with a ball player, a uh, husband, now a, a uh, golf architect like yourself? Developer, yeah. Yeah. Well, she How's she's Christy? adjusted very well. She she you know being a baseball wife is is not the easiest thing in the world. You know that traveling, that schedule, uh, having to raise the kids, those kind of things. And and that was the one thing that at the end of my career probably was the most wearing was being that long distance dad. And you, you know, it's is your kids get older, they're they're doing different things. You got to be involved with them in order to, to help them become who they're going to be. First dad takes care of Ellis for the first out and your kids fine athletes in their own rights. Tell us about what they're doing. Tim well, and Amy. My, yeah my son uh, uh, Tim went to UCLA and matter of fact played with Troy and, and played with Eric Burns who's on mm -hmm. uh, the Oakland team and uh, did very well there he graduated and he signed with uh, Baltimore and he's currently with the Oakland A's in the minor leagues right now and my daughter uh, um, went away on a volleyball scholarship to Michigan but then got hurt and graduated from UCLA this past year and she's going to Pepperdine uh, to get her master's in uh, What's your uh, edu major? educational psychology. Wow. So. Congratulations. I'm very proud of both of them. I've been very blessed that way. Here's Scott Hatterberg and he faces his old teammate. I mean you're talking about right. Tim playing with Troy Hatterberg caught Seeley at Washington State both 32 years old. You know, there's always something about that. Uh, you know, the first time I faced my roommate that I had, and, and he got traded one day, and then the next week we were playing against each other, and he came into the bullpen. His name Dyer Miller. We we're playing right here. Uh, he, he got traded to the Angels, and I was still with the Orioles. And I walked up, and I looked out there, and he looked at me, and we both. He stepped off the mat. I had to step out of the batter's box because you know we're laughing at each other, going, "Okay, how are we going to get into this? This is this is serious business." <laughs> That was Dyer Miller that uh, you know was my roommate and you know and I'm sure Atterberg had to get through the same thing here when he walked up the first couple of times after knowing each other so well and, and probably being good friends. Doug now you know you dealt with a lot of injuries like all these ball players have to go through but recently you had hip replacement surgery tell us about that and how you're coming with that. Well uh, I'm glad it's over with and uh, I, I feel a lot better now it, it's a, not an easy thing to go through especially when you're you know I, I got that three years ago and, and now it's pretty much stabilized and I'm feeling pretty good so last you know 
Last year wasn't a real good health year, but I'm feeling great right now and uh, and looking forward to staying that way, Rex. Fizz, his it hasn't affected his golf game whatsoever. <laughs> he still it did long. for a while. He still long gets down there and he's a one putt guy. Yeah, but I can never beat Bobby Gretsch. She's too good for me. He <laughs> is outstanding, man. He can hit it far. There's a ground ball, Troy Gloss. Got good arm. Hey Doug, let's do that Aflac answer to find out whose record you're tied with. You're one of five American League players ever to hit three home runs in a game twice in one season. The other four players are Ted Williams, Joe Carter, Cecil Fielder, and Geronimo Barroa. Geronimo Barroa did it in '96. You know, I didn't know that. I didn't know the last one, and I knew Ted Williams and Joe Carter did it, but I didn't even know Cecil Cecil did it. Way to go! Nice and company. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll stay there. Now Miguel Tejada. Doug, I wanted to get your opinion on Troy Gloss because he's a third baseman who's going to be a great star in this game. 25 years old. What does a young slugger go through when you're trying to find that consistency that really Garrett Anderson has found right now? Well, um, he's got to he's got to get more uh, comfortable and and establish more of a, of a of a straighter routine for himself so he doesn't. Um, Change a lot of things, and, and he hasn't quite found that yet. But he, you know, he's just blessed with phenomenal ability. Uh, you know, you watch that play the last time he set up, and he you know, throws a 97 mile an hour <laughs> fastball across the, the infield. I mean, he's just got great ability. He's got great power. His potential is really unlimited. It's just going to take time. I mean, there's not a lot of hitters. Not, not everybody's, uh, you know, a rod who can come up at a young age or Ken Griffey Junior come up and then just have it go perfect for him all the time and uh, the big thing that Troy is that he's very competitive and he just needs to make some adjustments and and, and keep that confidence in himself that hurt that hurt you didn't hit the ever ball you ever hit a ball off your ankle every day oh, oh of course once a week let me change that <laughs> I was I was not in your league I didn't deserve that everyday status but you know that hurts heck and that's like I'd like to make that example of how a, a fan can can feel that pain is go out in your garage get a hammer and, and just, hit yourself in the shin that's just, exactly right look at that ball hit him I mean, you know, that, that'll bring that owl pain to you well, it's uh, you know when you do that too many times you can suffer some you know a, a, Long term injuries from that. Look at Jermaine Dye last year in the playoffs uh -huh. when he fouled the ball off his leg, broke his leg, and he was gone for almost five months. And it probably still hurts him today. Yeah. Doug, I got a quick question. I played for the Cowboy and I know what it was like. Could you, what was your experience with Gene Autry? Uh, he was he was great. He was, you know, he'd come into our clubhouse whether we won or we lost, and you know, and, and wouldn't be anything for him to sit down next to you in the locker and, and talk about, it, especially even if it was a tough game, you know, it was like you know, I don't want you guys to get down. You know, I know it's a tough game, and we got to do what we got to do to come out here tomorrow. And then the other times, uh, the other times, you know, if we won, he he enjoyed those as well. And he was just he was just a consistent figure for us. And and it was just too bad that we never, you know, we didn't get that last. We didn't win that last game in '82, and we didn't win that game in '86. And uh, you know, because a lot of the players wanted to get to the World Series because. They know what he had dedicated to the game of baseball and this organization to be able to get there. Two great seasons in 82 and 86, and you came so close. Very close. About as close as you can come without getting <laughs> one pitch away. Milwaukee and Austin would represent the American League. Well, Sealy strikes out Miguel Tejada. Doug, thanks so much for joining us. And Reliving those 82 great memories. Well, it's my pleasure, and, and you guys are doing a great job up here. And let's just hope that, you know, 20 years later here, this is the year that the Angels are going to be back in the playoffs. Way to go, Doug. Thanks for coming up, man. Doug See you at, at Strawberry Farms. I'll be there waiting for you. It's that time of the night. Dusk here in Orange County. That means it'll be tough on those outfielders. It's a two-nothing ball game. The Angels have the lead, and to start things here for the Alos, it will be Troy Gloss. It's really interesting talking with Doug DeCincy about Troy because both play third base. Doug, of course, an All-Star in the 70s and 80s with Baltimore and the Angels, and Troy Gloss, an All-Star last year for the Anaheim Angels. 
And he's going, as you've said, HUD, he's going to be a superstar. But sometimes, well, Doug uh, on the way out of the booth was saying, when Troy Gloss really, really irons out that right center to center field mentality, he said he'll always hit home runs to left field. But his approach to right center and center field, when, once he gets that down, the game might become like Garrett Anderson's game. Using the whole field. Mm -hmm. He's got that pop. He can go deep to right field, right center, and dead center field. One to right field. Left field, though, no problem. He's got one this year to right, and he, he could have 12 to right field. Easiest thing to do. I mean, it's to say he's got to wait on the ball. That's the hardest thing as a hitter. And a big swing and a miss, and down he goes, striking out for the first time in this game. Tim Hudson gets him. Well, it all started with Fox Sports Net making television history, free TV's first ever ultimate fight. Millions went wild for it, and now it's back. One full hour of UFC action that's as real as it gets. Ultimate fighting, ultimate television. The Ultimate Fighting Championships are August 4th only on Fox Sports Net. Tim Hudson just recorded his first strikeout of the ball game. Now faces Brad Fulmer, who pops one high and deep to right center field. Terrence Long at the wall. It's off the wall. And Fulmer has a double. Homer with his 25th double. That ball was high in the sky, and I, I believe Terrence Long couldn't see it. He gave a signal and he, he couldn't see it. This ball might have been caught had they saw it. Homer thought he popped it out. You could see him shaking his head. The hitter knows by the feel of that ball hitting the bat if he got it all or not. Immediately, instantaneously, you can feel whether you hit it enough for a home run or off the wall. But Brad has been an extra base machine. 22 of his last 31 hits have gone for extra bases. Now the Angels will try and get him home with Orlando Palmero stepping up. Orlando single to right field. The Angels would love to get that. They need more runs against Tim Hudson. As many as they can muster. Hudson gave up five to the Angels in his last start, but prior to that, he gave up one run over three games. That covered 23 innings. Just great work by Tim Hudson. Almero takes a strike. Now he's down in the count, nothing and two. He had two strikes on him when he singled in his last at bat. Orlando, one of the better two strike hitters in baseball. The Angels with a 2 0 lead. On an infield hit, a bunt single by Adam Kennedy, a triple by Eckstein, and then X scored in a wild pitch, and that ball's up high. But I, I liked after the Angels scored two runs for Seeley in the third, he shut down the Oakland A's in the fourth. One, two, three. Kept them from gaining any momentum. Well, it's like Kevin Apier said last night anytime you're taking on Oakland and their top pitchers, you know you have to keep that score down. The Angels did last night, but they only scored one. The A's scored two. Tonight, the Angels have the two. Palmero flips it foul. Angels second in the league in doubles. 211. Wow. And that's where they're picking up men in scoring position. Well, they have two guys in the top 10. Of course, Garrett Anderson leads the league in doubles with 36. Tim Salmon is sixth with 30. And then you've got Brad Fulmer with 25. Orlando takes it high and tight. Two balls and two strikes. 64 games to go for the Halos. They started tonight, two games behind Atlanta, behind Seattle in the American League West. And Seattle right now is down to Texas 2 nothing in the fifth. It's Kenny Rogers throwing tonight for C for Texas and Fred Garcia for Seattle. Palmero goes to center field. 
Terrence Long will pull it down. Fulmer tags. He's off for third and will make it safely. Orlando just hit it in the wrong spot. Anywhere left and right, he's got a double. Hey, there's a final score from Boston. Tampa Bay beat him nine to five. They were down four nothing in the ninth. Tampa Bay rallied to win it five four. So that affects the wild card race as both Anaheim and Oakland now a half game in front of Boston for the wild card lead in the American League. It wasn't Ugeth Urbina again, was it? I don't think so, but it was Ugeth who got whipped last night. Fulmer now at third. George Fabregas at the play almost hit a home run in his last at bat with two on board sent Terrence long to the wall and dead center. Kenny Rogers pitching for Texas tonight against Fred Garcia. How about Kenny Rogers uh, saying no to the trade to Cincinnati. Well. I, I can't believe that he, he would not leave that hot. Desert climate in Texas, last place team for two months to play on a contending team like Cincinnati. Well, maybe he feels that another club is interested and he might be able to go to a team like Seattle that he thinks has a better chance than Cincinnati. I don't know. If he goes to Seattle, better for the Halos. Halos be a plot in that decision. Wait a second. Come on. Andy Rogers has pitched well he's this not year. He, he's not going anywhere. In my right. opinion, I don't think he wants to pitch in postseason. That's my opinion. I oh, think HUD, I, you're a hard man to please. I think he's scared. Fabregas foul. You know, the last time he was in postseason was with the Mets. Had a chance, game on the line, comes in out of the bullpen and throws a 3 2 changeup a foot outside in a situation where he, he, he clearly should have just went right after the hitter. This goes back to that time when he silently worded what he was going to throw to you and then threw you something else. Well, this is personal, isn't it? No. <laughs> it's my opinion. You, you asked me. Okay. Hey. I was surprised that he did not accept the trade to Cincinnati. So was I. He also threw a perfect game against Rex Hudler's Angels in 94. Doesn't Ouch. have anything to do with it. I know. <laughs> oh, well, if, if Kenny Rogers' family's listening, hey, look, nothing personal. That's just my opinion. You know, and they're just struggling strawberry farmers in Plant City, Florida. Oh, life is tough. He's got a large family to support. Come on. He said a lot of nice things about you, Hud. No, he didn't. <laughs> he said my line drive was not a line drive. He said it was a jam shot. But really, nothing but off of Hudson's glove. Tough play for Ellis, and he gets Fabregas by two steps. The Angels threaten but do not score. They hold a 2 0 lead on Tim Hudson and Oakland as we head to the fifth here in Anaheim. <laughs> 2 0 Anaheim has the lead on Oakland. Angels fans, head over to 24 Hour Fitness and they'll get you in shape and feeling great. Sign up for a membership now and you'll get a special bonus two free tickets to see the Angels take on the Yanks. At Edison Field, 24 hour fitness, it's the way we make you feel. Yankees are coming. Ground ball hit to Adam Kennedy. Dave Justice is out. Aaron Seeley pitching well. He's gone four and a third innings of shutout baseball. His best performance this year was against the Los Angeles Dodgers when he shut them out in a complete game three hitter. His command was outstanding that day. And against Oakland, he's had considerable success. 12 wins, an ERA under four. That was with Texas and Seattle. Just a little bit this year with the Angels. Seely and Apier bring that experience that's needed to get through tough games. The heat of the battle, they've been there. There's a lot to be said for that. I mean, look what Kevin Apier did for the Mets last year when they needed him most, when the Mets were pushing towards the playoffs, even though they did not make it. Kevin won his last six starts, and that allowed them to stay in contention. He did his job. He was their ace, not Al Leiter, in their, in their push towards Atlanta. And 
the National League East last year. Ground ball, AK stays low. Two out. Let's talk about Adam Kennedy. That's one thing. Remember when he would stand a little taller at second base and bend from the waist? Now he's really getting low, bending his knees a lot more in those ground balls. And remember, he's he played a lot of shortstop with the Cardinals. And he comes over to the Angels. He's second base. Look at him staying low. That's so improper. Keep the knees bent. Stay down. And when you're down, your head's closer to the ground. You see the hops. Your eyes are lower. You're able to see everything in front of you. And you want to use two hands when you catch a ball in the infield. Well, I remember going to spring training with you and you teaching my son Kevin the exact same things. He's, he has really stepped up his game. Foul ball. Work habits are so important. Adam Kennedy works as hard, if not harder than anyone. Spring training, he really took extra time with Alfredo Griffin, going out there working, him and David Eckstein, and hard work pays off. That's the number one defensive unit out there on the field. In the American League. I mean, how about the double play he turned in the first inning, staying in there on a hard sliding Scott Hatterberg. And he was like, he looked like an airplane flying through the air after he released that baseball to first base. Good curveball by Seeley, and he gets his third strike out of the game. Five shutout innings by Aaron Seeley. We head to the last of the fifth. Here comes AK. Aaron Seeley terrific through five. He has not walked in Oakland A. He has struck out three and has a two nothing lead. Now we've got a chance to go online and do our virtual manager on FoxSports.com. Key word virtual manager. Adam Kennedy takes strike one and our question is about Adam Kennedy. Would you start Adam Kennedy every day including games versus left handed pitchers. Can answer that question by going online on Fox Sports. AK bunt single his first time up scored a run almost gets hit here by Tim Hudson. One ball one strike. And AK was the catalyst in that inning in the third. Gets on base first with a great bunt. Couldn't have rolled it any better. Head first dive. Scored on the gap. Popped him up. Left side John Mabry. One out. You know, Fizz, let, let's let's show the people the double play turn early. First inning, here it comes. Gloss all the way across the diamond. Kendi call him the thief of Baghdad. Look at how quick his hands are. We couldn't even see the transfer. He's got lightning quick hands, but the key is when that second or when that runner's coming in on you as a second baseman, you must get in the air. So when he hits you, your your legs aren't planted on the ground and, and stay away from injury. You've got to get up like he did and land on the runner if you have to. He was running hard also after that pop up. Here's David Eckstein. I love landing on guys when they knock me down. If they're going to knock me down. They're going to get a redwood fall right on top. And that is the red hair of Rex Hudler. It was fun. Second base catching those are two violent areas where you get a lot of action a lot of body physical contact. These players wear, wear no padding and they wear metal spikes. Now David Eckstein who is responsible for the Angels two runs after Adam Kennedy laid the bunt single down Eckstein on a hit and run tripled in the right center gap and then he would score in a wild pitch so he drove in the first run scored the second run it's two nothing halos. Two and two. Hudson has had only one, one, two, three inning. That was the first. Left two men aboard in the second. Gave up the two runs in the third. Left a man on after the double by Fulmer in the fourth. Ooh, that's a little emergency swing. That's good. Pitch in on his hands like that. He's checking his bat, see if he broke it. But talk about balance. I really enjoy with the many talk show stories I, I get to do on the radio. Talk about the balance of the Angels lineup. Mike Sosha has one through nine players who can hurt you. Tonight, it was Eckstein and Kennedy, top and bottom. 
And there is a knife back into center field. And I say knife because he took it off his hands, didn't even get really most of the sweet part of the bat. Eckstein has the great ability to be able to pull his hands through and not get jammed. That's why he hits those home runs down the line. Hands go first, and the bat head follows. That's how you inside out a swing. And when you look at it again, he did get the sweet part. Look how far he pulls his hands I know, in. Watch him. His hands are in close to his body. Kept him in the whole way, and that's how you go the other way. You want a good drill to practice this. Watch it again. Inside out. See how his hands are really up close to his body inside. You want to practice that. Get near a fence and try to swing and not hit the fence. See how close you can get to swinging without hitting the fence. Keep your hands in close to your chest. So how many fences did you have to repair for your mom growing up? Well, it wasn't necessarily the fence. Pick, a, pick one of those wire fences, one of those uh, you know, wire fences, and move up on it. And I worried more about my bats because I didn't want to hit the fence and ruin my bat. Forget <laughs> about forget about mom's mom's uh, uh, fence. <laughs> You're working on your game. Heck, man, that's my bat. But it really helped me keep that my hands in, just like the X Factor. Well, here is Darren Erstad. He is due simply because, as Doug DeSensei said when he was with us, Erstad has hit the ball sharply. His last well, four times in the last two games and has nothing to show for it because he's been robbed by wonderful defensive plays. He was robbed of a base hit back in the third by Miguel Tejada. Miguel robbed him last night. Base is loaded. Erstad lined one towards left. Miguel dove. Rob Erste of a hit and the Angels of two runs. Also his line out in the ninth inning with Eric Burns struggled with his catch but made it. Let's see if something's on with Eckstein. He's stolen 15 bags this year. Could be with one out. How about this Texas has a four nothing lead with. Rex Hudler's favorite, Kenny Rogers, shutting out the M's. Could that be a nice little audition for Lou Pinella and Brian Price, the pitching coach? Well, those are the two teams rumored, Seattle and San Francisco. He said no to Cincinnati. You know, in Kenny Rogers' defense, he's probably thinking that maybe he could get, you know, a more attractive team to come and get him. Just hold on. He mentioned his kids. You know, he's, he's got two children at home and he didn't want to uproot them, didn't want to bring them up. But then if he accepts another trade to another team, he just blew off Cincinnati. Next time does not go. Erstad pops it foul left side. So what's happening now is Hudson normally lives in the lower half of the strike zone. He's been getting the ball up and it looks good to hit. Erstad, he's trying to get on top of that ball and hit it out of the ballpark. When Hudson's on, everything's in the dirt. And that's been his problem. That's this year. I mean, he's seven and eight. He's a lot better than his record is showing. He has not received a lot of run support this year. Fifth lowest run support in the American League at just four runs per game. Might remember Tim was 0 and 4 with a seven and a half ERA in the month of May. He's been strong the rest of the year. Erstad to Hatterberg. He bobbles. They get it to first base, and Eckstein goes to second. But they had a chance at the double play. They get one, and there are two outs now. Again, Ersty hits it hard. Again, nothing to show for it. Hatterberg, give him credit for staying with it. Hit the end of his glove, couldn't find the handle. Hutz, a great athlete, was there in plenty of time. Whenever that ball's hit to the right side, the pitcher is trained to cover first. Important play in baseball. Pitcher getting over. PFP is what they call it in spring training. Pitchers fielding practice. PFP, boys. All day. Work, work, work. Well, to where it becomes a natural thing for you when you're pitching. Cover first. Now Tim versus Tim. And Salmon takes up high. One ball, no strikes. 
X Dine at second base a third run would look mighty big the way Seeley is pitching Art Howe knows that but one thing Art may not know is when David Eckstein scores two runs in a ball game the Angels haven't lost this year they are 16 and 0 Art knows that I'm sure you think heck yeah he's All a right. brilliant manager one and one Hudson just challenged Sam with the fastball he's he's challenging them above the knees and usually he's an orange soda pitcher knee high <laughs> That's right. Kingfish nice crouch pushes pushed his hands away from his body since early in the season oh that's a pretty pitch that night back into the strike zone one ball two strikes Salmon's grounded out twice to third Great series against Seattle six hits and 11 at bats and drove in seven runs including five in one game that 15 to 3 slaughter on Friday night. I mean if there is an angel fan that went on a long vacation and left at the end of April and came back now. They'd be shocked to look at the numbers. The Angels 18 games over 500 after their worst start in franchise history six wins and 14 defeats. A guy kept them together. Out off. This is good here. See Salmon swinging with a runner in scoring position. Anything close with two strikes trying to chip that run home. Anything you can do. Good RBI guys will do that. Salmon's one of the those after his awful start. He has 63 driven in now this year. They were moving around to the sixth to seven position earlier this year. Now he's crawled all the way back to number three where he started the season. Gloss went from three to five. X Dine's been the lead guy the whole season, and he is two for three in this game with a triple, an RBI, a run scored, and a wild pitch. Now trying to get home from second base. And Salmon swings and misses and strikes out. So Hudson gets only his second strike out of the ball game, but both have been big ones in this contest. Fox Sports Net presents Anaheim Angels Baseball, brought to you by Buick. Real luxury at an affordable price. Buick, it's all good. By Atlack. Ask about it at work. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you at Edison International Field of Anaheim, where the Angels lead 2 0 over the Oakland A's. Both runs coming in the third inning, a triple by Eckstein that played in Kennedy, and then Eckstein scored in the wild pitch. Here in the sixth inning, it'll be John Mabry, Terrence Long, and Greg Myers, and Aaron Seeley does what he's done all night long, throws strike one. He has been sharp. Even though he has given up two hits in the game, he's faced the minimum. The Angels turned a double play in the first, and Mabry was thrown out trying to steal a base on a strikeout in the third. Uncle George pegged him out. Look at that curveball. Seeley, in his good outings, he gets stronger as the game moves along. He feels that momentum. All he needs is a little run support. Last year, when he pitched for the Mariners, they gave him seven runs a game. Well, he is working the corners well. Up, down. Good bite on his curveball as well. Really, his worst inning was a one, two, three inning in the second. Remember that long shot by Justice that Orlando Palmero made a great catch? The next batter, Chavez, lined out. The next batter, Jermaine Dye. Hit one in the hole between third and short. Eckstein with a nice play backhanded threw him out. But other than that, Seeley has quieted the A's but must continue to do that because Tim Hudson's pitching against him. The See, A's have dominated the series thus far this year, Hud. They've won seven of the ten meetings with the Angels and have won 21 of the last 30. And a good pitch by Seeley. He changes the speeds and he strikes out John Mabry. A beauty. Mabry is a good hitter. Make Mabry look like that. That's just excellent execution of your pitch right there. Change up. 
See, you can't tell the arm speed. It's the same as a fastball. Fourth strikeout for CD. All swinging. Nice arm action. Now Terrence Long. All one. A lot of people have been talking about the Oakland A's because of their offense needing to trade for offense. And Billy Bean, their general manager, I'm sure working the phones. We've heard stories about Randy Wynn, perhaps, maybe Jose Cruz, Jim Tomey. Right Ooh. now, that's an expensive price tag. But you're looking at an offense, Oakland, that has 40 more home runs than the Angels do this year. Yet the Angels score a half run per game more. The Angels at 5.3, the A's at 4.7. It says something about the, the Angels' ability to drive in runs when guys are in scoring position. Oakland's dead last, the Angels in the top five. Angels first, excuse me. Well, they're in the top five. I wasn't sure if New York was ahead of them. Going back and forth. There's a strike on the inside corner. Oh, New York won tonight big. I guess their men in scoring position went up tonight because they put 14 on the board against Cleveland. 14 7, New York. Minnesota won over Chicago, 8 to 1. And there's a line drive base hit in the alley. Palmero will go to cut it off. He spins and fires to second base, and Terrence Long will have to hold it first. Maybe the throw by Orlando wasn't that great, but just getting to the baseball so quickly is what threw long and held him at first. Yep, first step quickness is good for any position player. You got to be able to move on that ball's hit. Palmero was off on a dart, and he threw a nice ball in there enough to hold long. Good hustle. These Angels, they play to win every pitch. Still no runner pass first tonight for Oakland. And there's a ground ball. Kennedy has it. Second base one. Not in time, but AK takes not only a base hit away from Greg Myers, but he gets the lead man at second base. This kept the ace from having a big inning here. Greg Myers hits a scorcher. Kennedy. Comes to his knee, fires his ball, nearly gets a double play here. It's this kind of defense here that's really keeping these Angels flying high. Palmero's play in the second inning. Eckstein's play in the second. Now Adam Kennedy in the sixth, keeping Seeley in shutout fashion. He's gone five and two thirds innings of shutout baseball, struck out four. Now he's facing Mark Ellis, who represents the tying run. Pitching and defense. That is what will win for the Angels in the second half. They know they have a solid offense that will help carry them. With two outs, Brad Fulmer was holding Greg Myers on at first base. They yelled at him and said, hey, play in back of him, give you a little more range. Curveball, did it go around? No, it's one and one. Hey, this umpire and crew's done a great job in the first two games. Terry Kraft tonight behind home plate. Marty Foster at first. Andy Fletcher at second. Daryl Cousins at third. We haven't had too many debates and we've shown replays. It's the umpires who have been correct. In there. One and two. These umpires, for the most part, do a great job, and it's, it's a shame that Major League Baseball is really getting technical on them and cracking down. You know, they're, they're standing over their shoulder every game, every pitch. A flare towards right field, but foul. Well, I believe that you have to have some kind of boss that oversees and corrects mistakes, and in the past, the umpires did not. And I, I really think Sandy Alderson does a great job. I just think he's a visionary. But I think all of us, I mean, you and I have bosses who will call us occasionally and say, no, don't do it that way. Try it this way. And I think the umpires needed that as well. I thought a move was made in the right direction when they put them together. No National League, American League umpires. They are major league umpires. Line drive into center field, a base hit for Mark Ellis. 
The first time the A's have had two hits in an inning in this game. Groups of 25 or more can save big while they enjoy a day at the ballpark. Discounted ticket prices on selected game dates will ensure affordable fun for groups of family and friends. For more information or to book your group today, call the Angels Group Sales Department at 714-940-2074. And I think this is a big moment in the ball game. Two reasons why. You have Scott Hatterberg here. And if you can get Scott Hatterberg out without a run scoring, the Angels will still have a 2-0 lead. Then, if Hatterberg doesn't reach, Miguel Tejada will have to lead off the seventh inning, and it might be the last time you have to face Tejada. And Tejada will not have a chance to tie or win the game or put his team in the lead. He's their hottest player. Ooh. Raises the corner now Hatterberg in the hole down 0 2 and he knows he'll see that nasty curve ball from Aaron Seeley. Or the changeup that was effective on John Maber. Too many fingers for me to count. Scrambling the signs with a guy on second. So Seeley goes up in the strike zone. Doesn't get the call but great purpose pitch. Sets up the next one. Either that big curve or maybe possibly change up away. Ground ball hit to Troy. Goes across the diamond, gets his man. Nice pitching by Aaron Seeley. And Aaron does get Scott Hatterberg to end the sixth inning. It's 2 nothing Angels. Adam Kennedy with the play of the inning. Aaron Seeley just worked out of his first real jam in this game is throwing six shutout innings on Oakland coming up after the game it's the Southern California Sports Report 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to the home team throughout Southern California we will have a post game report on this game Dodgers Padres highlights and our Fox focus Dan Gadzurek's tryout with the Milwaukee Bucks that's immediately after the ball game. Well here is Garrett Anderson and it is strike one and HUD you take a look at our Jack in the Box leaders did you know Garrett Anderson has more hits than any other major leaguer since 95 no that's when he was a rookie I knew he was up there but not at the top and he missed the first three months of that 95 season came on in July finished second in the rookie of the year balloting to Marty Cordova he plays every day and he gets a ton of hits. He's always up there around 180 to 200 hits every single year. They used to just chat me, HUD, when people would say he doesn't dive for baseballs. And I would say, but he plays every day. 119 hits this year. Four of the last six years, he's been the leader. Banks it hard and it goes under the glove of Miguel Tejada and Garrett reaches to lead off the last of the sixth. Outside he's able to go with it. It's all the ball off there. The ball hopped up. Tejada had no chance. Ball was hit too hard. I mean he's he's got great hands and it wouldn't surprise me if he'd have picked that. That's a base hit all the way. So Garrett one for three in the game. And he continues to stretch his mark since 95 more hits than any other big leaguer. Now the Angels would love to get a big fly from this guy. Troy Gloss. He's at 16 home runs. And he pops a foul back our way strike one. Anderson continues his hit streak stretching into 10 consecutive games. Gloss had a big three run home run on Saturday. And as you said HUD didn't try to do very much with it. Oh nice and easy. That was a good pitch at 92. He just missed. From Hudson. And Troy gets hit in the back. 
So Anderson will take second base. That certainly was not a purpose pitch when you're down to nothing. Now you've got two guys on with nobody out in the sixth inning. Got a pitch inside to Gloss. This one just got away. Hudson didn't want to put him on. Now Tim will face a guy who has been on twice in this game and he comes up with two on G.A. at second Troy Gloss at first and it's Brad Fulmer reached on the air by the second baseman Mark Ellis and punched one off the right field wall for a double in his last A.B. He has two career home runs against Tim Hudson. Strike one. Hudson leaving that change up up in the strike zone. Yeah, he hasn't had his great command. Anderson single. Loss hit by a pitch. Pitches like to come inside to Brad. They will here, and he punches it towards center field base hit. The bases will be loaded. Garrett had to wait to make sure Mark Ellis would not. Catch the baseball. He didn't want to get double off second. Instead, the Angels have the bases loaded and nobody out. Sosha looking for a little bit more. Take a little pressure off that bullpen later in this game. This was a, a jam shot. Look at him. Talk about keeping your hands in. Fulmer does a good job of pulling his hands in and getting the meat of the bat on that up the middle. Garrett going back to second. Want to make sure. Nobody out. Now looking for Paul Merrill here. Slash and dash type of hitter. They play him to the opposite field. He's got all around hitting ability. It's to all fields. Just does not want to hit it back towards the mound and Tim Hudson. This is the inning the Angels got to the A's and Tim Hudson last week. Scored five runs off Tim Hudson. They've got the bases loaded. Paul Merrill, they're playing the defense back in the middle for the double play. The corners are in. Down low, two balls and no strikes. Paul Merrill has never hit a grand slam. He's only got two career home runs. Three, excuse me. Sorry, Orlando. Hey, when you have a low total, every single one counts much more. He's looking for something to drive. Eckstein's the grand slam machine. Maybe he'll put a whammy on Orlando. Down low and inside. Three balls and no strikes. Hug, if you're in the Orlando Palmero situation here, how many pitches will you take? We'll take this one for sure, and then possibly another one. Whenever you feel the pitcher's losing command, like Rick Peterson might be thinking. That Hudson is. You just want to take a few. Make him come back in there. The 3 0 in there. 3 and 1. I wouldn't be surprised to see him take the pitch or even rip and rip. This is a, a, a good fastball count you, a hitter, loves to have with the bases loaded. You don't want to let the pitcher off. He comes down the middle with another straight, and you got to bust him. You need discipline though to make sure it is your pitch. And Palmero rips it in the right center alley. In comes Garrett, right behind Troy Gloss. Flying home is Fulmer. Three score, and the Angels go up by five. This is the same inning they got him in Oakland on Wednesday. Paul Merrill singled early in his first at bat, lined a shot to center, and then split the gap with the bases drawn. Pitch he can drive, 3 1 count, he waited, and he cleared the sacks with that one swing. Talk about timely hitting. Paul Merrill just did it. So 
now pitching coach Rick Peterson comes out for a visit with Tim Hudson. Greg Myers joins him. Oakland getting their bullpen busy and having to get it busy because Hudson was cruising for a while since giving up two runs in the third. Magnate's the lefty and the righty. Hudson gave up five against the Angels last week and five tonight and maybe one more with Palmero at second and nobody out in the sixth. Meantime Texas has gone to the seventh with a 4 1 lead on Seattle. Can the Ranger bullpen hold it. They haven't held many this year. Now George Fabregas and he is bunting and it's a good one. Myers throws out George the sacrifice perfectly placed Palmeiro's at third now with one out a ground ball a fly ball can get another angel run home. George had a big sacrifice bunt last Wednesday's game. As a fan appreciates doing the little things. These were two teams Seattle and Oakland that absolutely slaughtered the Angels last year. The A's won 14 of their 20 games. The Mariners won 15 of their 19 games. But it's almost like Bill Plunkett of the Orange County Register said the other day. Seattle and Oakland might be looking over their shoulder like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid saying, Who are these guys? They're a different bunch of guys since Seattle and Oakland saw them early in the season in April. Seattle left saying they are different and much more confident. When the Angels split in Oakland last week, Oakland said they are different. They're much more confident. It's going to be a three team horse race, I believe, right down to the end. Mike Sosha, after a terrible start, six wins, 14 losses, he's rallied his team, and they are charging in the American League West. Kennedy takes a strike. It's one and one. Infield is in. It's interesting how they've worked Kennedy upstairs. They want him to get that pop up. How do you stay on top of that baseball, Hud? Top hand. Look for it up. Get the top hand on it. Off speed might pop him up. Well, he stayed on top of it, fouls it off. One and two. Let's check out our virtual manager. We asked the question about Adam Kennedy. Would you play him every day? 73% of our audience said yes. 27% said no let's play Benji Gill and Jose Nieves a little bit. I'm going to side with that man. He's made all the right decisions this year. It's a good safe decision. It might be safe but. You know he believes that Adam Kennedy is an everyday player. He just says we've got two good players in Nieves and Gill that deserve to play as well and I want to get their hot bats in there. Way high two and two. Right now though your Mike Sosha has all these guys thinking one thing and that's whatever we can do to help the team win. When you're having a magical season like the Angels are this year. You're you're into coming to the yard every day excited. Doesn't matter. I mean sure you want to play everyone wants to play but you just they can't play them all. Speezy will get in the day off today. Kennedy lining at foul. And Mike Sosha and Mickey Hatcher were determined to get the club to improve their situational hitting. They sat him down in spring training and said, fellas, we want you to work harder at it this year. And some guys in the past might say, that's not what I do. That's not my game. But Mike and Mickey both said every single player bought in. And they said, we'll do whatever it takes to win games. Looking at Mickey Hatcher shouting words of encouragement to Kendi saying, right back up the middle, right back at him. Big hole there with the infield in. AK Kate strike three. High fastball, and that's the second out. Three strikeouts now for Hudson in the game. The side changeup fooled him. 70 miles an hour. Good pitch to hit. Kennedy upset with himself. Now David Eckstein who has two hits in the ball game infield pulls back with two out. 
He's one of the very best with men in scoring position. Here is a guy who has 50 RBIs and a leadoff hitter. David Eckstein has the third most RBIs of any leadoff hitter in the American League. Jacques Jones has more. Alfonso Soriano has more. Erstad was the best we saw the one year, two years ago, when he had 100 RBIs, hitting leadoff the most in Major League history. Eckstein almost got hit for the 18th time. OP with a big, big double. Cleared the bases. Hudson has thrown 96 pitches. This likely his last inning. Eckstein chops one. Tejada has to hustle. Comes up, fires, got him. But the Angels score three on a bases loaded double by Orlando Palmero as he splits the gaps in right center. Garrett, Gloss, Fulmer all come home and the Angels are on top by five. OP Orlando Palmera with three RBIs and a double and the last of the six the Angels up five nothing on Oakland. Let's check out a Mercedes Benz scoreboard. Texas up on Seattle 4 1. If the Angels win Seattle loses Anaheim will be within one of first place in the West. Boston lost so the Angels could take the wild card lead back. Cleveland losing big time to New York and David Wells. Minnesota charges past Chicago. Toronto 5 2 on Baltimore. And Jose Lima shuts out Kansas City. Mm, there's a curveball. Missed. Seeley would have liked to have it. Well, he has gotten strike one in so well in this contest. No walks in the game. And there is a strike. It's one ball and one strike. Aaron has now thrown 87 pitches, 27 out of the zone, 60 in the zone. He has had just two three ball counts. Both were three and two counts and got the next guy out. Tejada rips it, center field. Erstad back. Gone. He's done it again. That's now seven home runs by Miguel Tejada since the All Star break. Nice to see him come up with no one on base. That's what we we're talking about when Seeley got Hatterberg in the sixth inning. He is just knows where that sweet spot is on that baseball bat. He's is hot. Doesn't matter. Center field, left field. He's going to hit him. He gets him. New A's record for shortstops. Eddie Juice, the old Philadelphia A, had 116 with Miguel, but the crazy thing is, Juice needed his whole career to do it. Tejada is only 25 years old. You think he's got some kind of future? He is the man. He's the new Jason Giambi in that Oakland lineup. Now, you can't fill Giambi's shoes. That's impossible. But you can. Bring a guy like Te Tejada in there where he's hitting third now, where he's getting the big hits. Now, David Justice, he's lined out and grounded out. But it's Tejada, not Derek Jeter or Nomar Garcia Parra, who is second to Alex Rodriguez among American League shortstops in home runs for the third straight year. And you rarely hear about Miguel. So he's that triumvirate of Garcia Parra, Jeter, and A-Rock. Make him a quartet. Tejada deserves it. I agree. Who are you talking about with Dave Justice today? You and Randy Velarde and David were talking for a long time. Well, you know, we're talking about leadership and how David Justice is the more verbal, vocal leader on the team. Velarde's the man, the quiet leader. And whatever message Velarde wants to get out to his teammates, he does it through Justice. Really? Yeah. Wow. Justice gets the messages from Velarde to his teammates. That ball is whistled in the right center alley. That'll be two. Erstad plays it off the wall. And it is a double for David. So a home run, now a double. That might get the Angels' bullpen busy.
Seeley hung two breaking balls during that at bat to Justice. Justice took one and he said, I'm not going to let the next one go. There it was, off belt high. But late in the game, Mike Sosh has made a defensive move and pulled out Fulmer and put Scott Spezio in there at first. Fulmer been playing good first base for Sosha this year. Just wants to go with the experienced Spezio. Strike one. Eric Chavez is lined out, grounded out. Oakland is a come from behind team as well this year, and they have seen a lot of low scoring games of late. A home run and a double have gotten the Angels' pen busy. Now Chavez going left field and deep. Garrett Anderson pulls it down up against the wall. What a catch by GA because HUD with that low wall in left. That might have been a two run homer. I'll tell you, there's a there's a fine line out there when you get on that warning track near the wall. If you're an outfielder, especially running full speed. You got to know where you are. Garrett does it perfectly. Would have been close to being a homer. We'll see it better here. He is smooth, isn't he? Everything he does is smooth. But now Buddy Black's going out for a visit, and HUD, you and I both know that's allowing that bullpen to get some extra work because he's given up a home run, a double, and now a long fly ball to the left. The Angels want to keep it close, and Scott Shields is warming up in the Angels' pen. And the Angels won't have Percival available until Saturday. Troy says he is on target. Throw a simulated game through from the mound in the bullpen yesterday. He is completely healthy. The Angels have been getting it done with bullpen by committee. They've been a great committee. Last few games, it's been Shields, Donnelly, Weber. Scott Schoenweiss has been in there. They've all pitched great ball out of the pen. Fastball up, two and zero. Oh. It's Seeley right at that 100 pitch mark, 98 pitches thrown. They're keeping an eye on him, but he's put in another quality start for Social. I'll say, six and a third innings with just a run allowed. Now Jermaine Dye pops it up. Adam Kennedy, two outs. You know, speaking of the bullpen, I was talking with Angels Super Scout, Gary Sutherland, who is the right hand man to Bill Stoneman about Brendan Donnelly, and he said, Steve, Brendan Donnelly looked like this last year. He was absolutely dominating Triple A, and that's why Buddy Black was so excited about seeing him in the in the spring training this year. But then he came out and maybe he was trying to be too fine. But Brendan, it seems like since his recall on July 13th, HUD, look at those numbers. 13 strikeouts and seven and two thirds. Are you kidding me? Well, you know what? I think he's got a what the heck attitude. Let's let's let it all hang out. Let's go for it. It's what you got to have after 10 years of the minors. You came back from Japan with more of that philosophy. That's I mean, right. every moment you were on the field, you played as hard as you could. And I think that's what the fans really appreciated. And, and all of a sudden you played better. You never know when it's going to be your last day especially with all that minor league mileage Don blocked by Fabregas we'll wait and see how long Sosha lets him go see the year two outs is hoping he can get maybe on and out Maybe it'll be like that 82 season. Doug DeCincy said they had strong starting pitching, not much of a bullpen. The Angels do have a good bullpen. They've got a good first baseman. Good defense tonight. The Angels hold their lead. It's now four, though, five to one, as Miguel Tejada goes deep for the 22nd time this year. But the A's threat for more until Garrett Anderson said, not so fast. He went to the wall to rob Eric Chavez.
Here is our Jack Daniels game recap. Seeley has been sharp through seven innings. He's allowed one earned run. The Angels, 10 runs off Tim Hudson his last two games. Prior to the Halos, he had given up one run in 23 innings. Tejada with a solo home run, seven since the All Star break. There's Black and Seeley. How much do you have left? Well, you've got six outs to go, and you've got the bottom of the lineup. T Long, Greg Myers, a couple left handers. Maybe Sean Weiss will come out. Here is Darren Erstad. He's been robbed the last two at bats, Hud. Scalded one to short. Tejada made a great play and then ripped one to the first baseman who knocked it down and got Darren at first. A little surprised they've got Hudson still out there down by four runs. And there is Brendan Donnelly. I like those goggles as well. This is sweet. Anything for effect. Out off. That was Tim Hudson's 100th pitch. I think Hudson may have gone to Rick Peterson or Art House saying, I, I want to stay in this game. He's a workhorse. Six, eight, five, five, zero, three, much like last week when he gave up eight hits, but. Only three of the runs were earned last week. Now Erstad rips one. And running it down, Jermaine dies. So Darren Erstad can't buy a hit. Here's our game summary. The Angels have played terrific defense. Watch Adam Kennedy stay in on that double play. Orlando Palmero, great catch early in the game. And then Palmero with the bases full rips a double scoring three in the sixth and the Angels Aaron C. Lee has been sharp. He hasn't walked a man and he has struck out four in this game. And Aaron one run allowed through seven. Deal quality out. Consistency. All social wants and he's getting all three areas of a game pitching hitting and defense. Wait Tim Salmon has seen the best pitches from Tim Hudson it seems like Hudson has saved his very best for Tim. He's had pitches that have been back into the strike zone have dipped have ridden up. Inside of that he hasn't had his usual Tim Hudson command that one. Oh now he has a painful one. Looked like it missed his pad that he's got on there. Shin guard. Might have caught him on the ankle. Rick Smith going to come out. Pick up the bat for the Kingfish. Hand it to him. Ask him if he's OK first. Smitty giving him a little love. A little TLC. <laughs> that pad's turned sideways there and it looks like it got him right off the top of the foot. That's what a sinker ball pitcher will do to the hitter lots of times. Ball sinking down, the hitter hits the top half right into himself. Tough news in Seattle. That Texas bullpen is struggling again. Right now it's the Rangers 4-3 over Seattle. Tom Hicks spent all that money on players and he did nothing for his pen or his rotation. Hammond checked his swing. He went around and strikes out. But the winner of this game takes over the wild card spot. But right now, the Angels also hoping that Texas's bullpen, as beleaguered as it is, can hold off the M's maybe one time. Dan Wilson just hit a two-run home run to make it 4-3. Mike Sosha doesn't scoreboard watch. He leaves that to you and I, Hud. That's right. Stays focused on day to day duties. There's Garrett Anderson. Ball one. Four strike ass now for Hudson in the game. Kenny Rogers is still in that game. They haven't gone to the pen yet. Oh, that's even more trouble. Oh, stop it. Would you rather have Kenny Rogers out there or the Texas bullpen? No, I'm just saying the fact they're getting them off Rogers now and they haven't got to that bullpen yet is. Seattle, I like their chances. They're good at finishing. 
Coming on strong. Outside, 3 and 0. Oh. You know, there's still some tickets available tomorrow's 105 Businessman Special Day. I mean, there was it's about 35,000 tickets sold now. It's going to be a big event. Really? That's great. Mm -hmm. I love those 1 o'clock games. Heck yeah. You had a chance to bring the youngins here. And it's a great family opportunity. 35,000 tickets sold. That's great. Let's do it again. Still more room. Angels win tonight. Maybe that rubber game tomorrow night. Tomorrow afternoon. And if you can't be here at the ballpark, check it out on Fox Sports Net because we'll have it. And that's why you bring your glove to the yard. Had it all the way. Just grab that away from his buddy. Now Hudson ready with the 3 2 pitch, and Garrett Anderson will call time. We should remind fans that a week from Sunday against the New York Yankees, that time change is. Five o'clock to one o'clock. That's a new time. One o'clock ball game, and Hudson strikes out GA, and that's five strikeouts for Tim in the game. But he is down five one to Aaron Seeley and the Angels. Is Aaron coming back out? We'll find out. Fox Sports Net presents Anaheim Angels baseball, brought to you by your Southern California BMW Center. BMW, your ultimate driving machine. By Jack in the Box, where we don't make it till you order it. And by Kia Motors, makers of a full line of quality cars, blocked by a 10 warranty program. We're at Edison International Field, where the Angels have a 5 1 lead over Oakland and a pitching change to start the eighth inning. The Angels will go with the hot hand of Brendan Donnelly. He has been excellent of late. Stay with a hot hand. That's what Sosh is doing. Donnelly has a good fastball. It sinks. Slider and a split finger. ERA will soon be under that three mark if he can have another outing like he's had in the past. It's been brilliant. 18 punch outs, 15 innings. He will face the bottom of the order. Two lefties, Terrence Long and Greg Myers, and then a right hander in Mark Ellis before he goes back to a lefty in Scott Hatterberg. Thought this might be Schoenweiss territory, but not yet. Maybe they're saving Schoenweiss for Justice or Chavez. Strike one is a key for Donnelly. Likes to get ahead. There it is at 92 miles an hour to Terrence Long. He's, he threw 93. His last out. Long one for two. He's flied out and single. Waves at that fastball, nothing in two. Brendan Donnelly, the 31 year old rookie, born in Washington, D.C., lives in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Been released by six different organizations and granted free agency by two others. That's why you love him. Heck yeah. I think he's got me beat in that category. There's a split finger hit to Adam Kennedy. One out. Let's check out our Lexus upcoming schedule. This is a 20 game stretch against the best teams in baseball. The Angels split at Minnesota, the central leader, split with Oakland, who won 102 games last year, and swept the Mariners, who set a record with 116 wins last year and won the West. They lost the first of three against Oakland. Then, after tomorrow's game with the A's, they go to Seattle, then come home to face the Red Sox and Yankees. Monday through Sunday. Got a lot of them on Fox Sports Net. The Yankees are coming. Right now, Greg Myers is here. 0 for 2, robbed of a base hit. A great play by Adam Kennedy back in the sixth inning. Donnelly has been flat nasty. He's facing a guy, Greg Myers, who played for the Angels from 92 through 96. Popped him up. Broke his bat. Next time. Donnelly gets the first two guys out in the eighth inning. Well, tonight, the best damn sports show periods all star summer continues when Hall of Fame running back Eric Dixer Dickerson tells us who's the best running back of all time. Plus, the Diamondbacks' Luis Gonzalez talks about Arizona's chances to win the world championship. The all star summer continues tonight at 11 on Fox Sports Net.
Is Brendan Donnelly taking over the setup role for Mike Sosha? Absolute. Al Levine, he's active. Ready. Heck, he's going with a hot hand in Donnelly. This is how you win a role, win a job. By performance, by doing the job. Coming right after these hitters, not afraid. It's making Bill Stoneman's job a lot easier pitching so well. All of a sudden, Bill is working from a position of strength with Scott Shields coming on well and Brendan Donnelly coming on so well. And it's at the right time before the trade deadline. Because right now, everybody's asking for the moon. Did you hear what Pittsburgh asked for today no. from Oakland? Now, this is one of the writers from Oakland telling me. He said that Oakland said, what would it take to get Brian Giles? And they said, Barry Zito and Eric Chavez. <laughs> End of story. It's not going to happen. Wow. <laughs> Again, these are the rumors you hear this late in the season. Fouled back. Uh, that guy's untouchable. He Ooh. is so good. Curveball from the sky. Oh. And left handed at that. Left handed in the brain, too. The 2 2. Ellis reaching for it. Donnelly hitting those corners. You know what impressed me last night? On a 2 2 count, he threw Miguel Tejada a slider that wasn't called for a strike, and he came right back with it on 3 2 and struck him out. Almost looked like Tejada was looking for the fastball. He comes back with the slider and strikes out Mark Ellis, just like. Last night, pitching 101 by Brendan Donnelly. Red hot. Five to one, the Angels lead the Oakland Athletics. Coming up after the game, it's the Southern California Sports Report. 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to the home team throughout Southern California. We'll have a post-game report on this contest. Dodgers, Padres highlights, and our Fox focus, Dan Gadzurek's tryout with the Bucks. That is immediately after the ball game. There's a new pitcher for the Oakland Athletics, and his name is Jeff Tam. 31 year old right hander was born in Fullerton but raised in Florida 655 ERA. He's going to feature a fastball slider split finger. These are Tam's pitches come in here try to sh hold the Angels down. Looking to check in. Popped up to left field, struck out, and was hit by a pitch in his last at bat. There's strike one. Batting average down to 244. And fouled off Greg Myers. It's nothing in two. You know, when I was teammates with Greg Myers, he used to be a baseball magnet. We'd always call him the magnet because he would get a foul tip at least two, three times a game. He played a lot in 93, 108 games. Here's he. No stranger to pain. Knows how to shake it off. He's hurting now, but he's not letting you know about it. In there. And down goes Troy Gloss for the second time on strikes in this game. Where 
here in the eighth. The Angels with a 5-1 lead on Oakland. Two runs came across in the third inning on a bunt single by Adam Kennedy, a triple by Eckstein with an RBI. He would score a run in a wild pitch. The Angels would score three more in the sixth on a bases loaded double by Orlando Palmero. All three runners on base would score. Now Scott Spezio up for the first time in this game. Ball one. Spezio, he dyed that little thing red there. Little uh, bit of hair underneath his lip. Well, he did that last Friday for the wear red to the ballpark game. And then keep it red, Scott, because you got a knock in that red chin. By the hair of your chinny chin chin, that's a base hit. I've been talking to him about that little that little thing that's getting long there. Little hair and little uh, Billy Goo. Coming out of his lip, I said, Hey, Speeds, why don't you dye that red? That was a week or so ago. He goes, You know, I might. And he did. And it was just a suggestion. Everybody wants to be a redhead. Well, here's a guy who probably won't dye his hair red, but man, he has come through in the clutch. A single, a double with the bases loaded, breaking the game open. Angels by four. Home time in Seattle, HUD. It's still 4-3 ball game. Seattle now batting and batting in the last of the eighth inning. Kenny Paul Rogers Merrill. is still on the mound for Texas. Paul Merrill is an extremely valuable player to Mike Sosha. You can use him off the bench to pinch hit. He's their best pinch hitter. He can spot start to DH. You're going to get some production from him every time he's in the game. This spectacular catch in the first inning. Line drive over his head by David Justice. Ooh, that grazes the strike zone. Good pitch by Jeff Tam. Some interesting art right there. I'll have to figure. I'll have to check that out and see what that says. It's a shame you can't erase it. it stays on forever. <laughs> he might not think that. He's got to be kind of happy about that. Got to be some message. I'll get to the bottom of it tomorrow. Oh, good pitch by Jeff Cham. Now he's at front of Orlando Palmero. One ball, two strikes. These these new unis. These 82 throwback unis. Look at those. Now those are called two and ones. You got the stirrup and the sanitary all sewn in at one. So a player sometimes during the course of batting practice will change his socks two or three different times. But those two and ones, you just put one pair of socks on, and you got two and one. Runner goes. Palmero with a grounder to Mark Ellis. This will advance Spezio to second base. And the Angels have a man in scoring position with two out in the bottom of the eighth inning. How about that sock? Yeah, there's, there's a sock there that it's two, usually two sanitaries underneath the stirrup. So that's three pairs of socks they have on. And now he's one. A pair of, pair of uh, uh, sandwich just showed me had the wrong color on. Most everyone's wearing the, the orange ones. And those he got at Sox Fifth Avenue. Now, I like those two and ones, even though they're not traditional. They were easy. Just pull them on. Now, George Fabregas gets strike one. Spezio to third base. It'll be a wild pitch by Jeff Tam. It's still 4 3 Texas over Seattle in the eighth inning. Kenny Rogers right now facing John Olrud. Old 
Allroot is the guy who hurt them last night with Texas taking a lead late and Allroot hit a two run double. Brendan Donnelly excellent in his eighth inning. He might be coming out for the ninth. Side. George Fabregas with a solid game the way he called the balls and strikes and the pitches for Aaron Seeley also almost hit a home run earlier tonight had a big sacrifice so a solid game. Gas hits it sharply, but right at Mark Ellis. The Angels do not score, so they've got three outs to go. Their bullpen has to hold Hatterberg, Tejada, and Justice. Fox Sports Net presents Anaheim Angels Baseball, brought to you by Jack Daniels Country Cocktails. They're not coolers, they're Jack Daniels Country Cocktails. We're at the ballpark. The Angels trying to protect a 5-1 lead. The Angels over the A's. And again, it will be Brendan Donnelly on the hill. In the meantime, we've seen several stars in this game. Certainly Aaron Seeley getting a lot of votes for Gatorade player of the game, but the majority of the votes went for Orlando Palmero because he came through defensively and offensively. Palmero definitely deserved it. This catch was unbelievable. He's he caught that ball without even looking at it. Then he comes up. Opportune time. Split the gap, scored all three halos on base. Well, the rookie Donnelly will start the ninth inning despite a left hander, then a right hander, and a left hander. And the reason Mike Sosha not going with Scott Schoenweiss, Scott has a little back stiffness. Likely will be available tomorrow, but not for tonight so Mike Sosha wanted to make sure it didn't develop into something worse so he just told him to take the night off so Donnelly will try to shut the door on Oakland and he throws low it's one ball and one strike to the left handed swinging Hatterberg then the righty Tejada then the lefty Justice and then another lefty in Chavez. Ben Weber started to warm up in the Angels pen just in case. Donnelly has been near perfect since he reported back from Triple A Salt Lake City on July 13th. He hasn't given up a run. He don't want to go back. Well, he said that's his new goal. He said his earlier goal was make it, to make it to the major leagues, and he did that at the age of 30. He says his new goal is to stay here. A foul. He certainly had, didn't hurt in his chances at all. With all those strikeouts he's piling up. You know when he got here the first time I asked him did you see the Disney movie the rookie it's an outstanding film and he said he hadn't seen it yet but it's a wonderful movie about Jim Morris who made it to the big leagues at the age of 35 but here's a guy who never quit and went back and became a high school coach math teacher he decided to stay in professional baseball and fight it to the major leagues and Donnelly has done that in the year 2002. The count still Brendan's way one and two that first out of the ninth inning protecting the lead always so important. Low went with that split. The Angels bullpen against Seattle and it seemed like a mismatch at the time. But the Angels bruised the uh, Mariners pen for 17 runs on 16 hits in the three games and the Angels pen was the one that was stronger allowing just two runs at nine and a third and Donnelly was a big reason why. Strike three outside corner with the heat. Donnelly keeps on ticking that hard sinking fastball slider and split finger. 
outside corner. George Fabregas doing a great job of selling that pitch. Now the played 15 strikeouts, Hud, since his recall and no walks. That'll keep him here and might earn him a setup role when Percy comes back. Here's a good test, Miguel Tejada. We had this situation last night, and he had a 2-2 count on Miguel. Threw him a slider that the umpire didn't call for uh, strike three. Tejada was guessing fastball, and so Brendan on a 3-2 count threw him another slider and struck him out. Comes fastball right down Broadway, one and one. They've gone to the ninth in Seattle. It's still Texas leading 4-3 over the Mariners. Texas batting. Donnie with a four run lead here. Tejada, their big home run hitter. Just go ahead and challenge him anyway. Don't walk him. Let's go right after him. He hits this one a mile high to center field. Erstad is there. Makes the catch. Two out. You know you love these stories about a guy who has paid his dues and that is certainly Brendan Donnelly's case. He broke into pro ball in 1992 with the Chicago White Sox organization and it took him 10 years to make it to the bigs and he said when his manager Mike Brun Brumley surprised him with the news. You know he was on pins and needles. Now he's got to prove why he belongs every single day. David Justice, this should do it. Adam Kennedy there, and the Angels beat the A's five to one. Well, the Angels fly tonight. Now let's take you to the Southern California Sports Report with Barry LeBrock and John Fricky.